I'm recording this intro on top of a rabbit. Jungle. I'm now 900 stars in Bad Wars, having completed an entire prestige in only 100-ish <gasps> games of solo Bad Wars. It also means I'm double purple now, which is pretty cool. Let's go. Okay, it was 156 games. It, it's not really 100, but like, it, it, it's, it's still fast, right? So how did I achieve this? Let me introduce you to my good friend, Doorman Dave. After you've liked and subscribed, because this video has taken me a lot of hours to make. So if you aren't already aware, a few months ago, Hypixel added the Slumber Hotel to Bed Wars. Yes, I'm, I'm a bit late to the party, I know. But in the Slumber Hotel, you have a ton of quests, each of which give you 10,000 Bed Wars experience. Two whole stars. <laughs> so let me take you through my very short journey to 900 stars. The first few quests were pretty uninteresting. You saw one in this video. Yay! But let's jump right into the first three rooms. In the first room, I met the king, oh. who wanted 10 comfy pillows. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? But comfy pillows spawn once per game in each base's gen, and you can't put them in your ender chest. You have to carry them back to your shopkeeper. I lost a lot of time to this. The second room wasn't so bad. This guy called Finger Hammer wanted 100 silver coins and you get one per purchase of an item in game, so that, that was pretty good. But then the third room. I'll get to that in a moment, because in the meantime, I went around the hotel picking up other quests, including my first couple of repeatable quests, which would become integral to gathering tickets later. But once I'd completed those, I was already up to 818 stars. So I tried my luck at the ticket machine, then talked to the blacksmith who wanted way too much stuff, I also found John Indigos, who wanted the item the blacksmith would give me. Anyway, so in the third room I met the Oasis Spirit who wanted 250 Dreamers Soul Fragments, what the fuck? So you get these fragments from Void Kills, and I average probably three Void Kills per game, but th th that's me, an 800, now 900 star. What about some poor nun who gets destroyed by their first rush every game? Oh, and did I mention? One of the things the blacksmith needs is the item the Oasis Spirit gives you. Yeah, and, and you can't get any quests past the third room until you complete it. Really bloody brilliant design. So I decided to play dirty and took out my KB stick. Sounds inappropriate. And after some experimenting, came to the conclusion that Slumber was the best map for void kills because there's just so much void on it. And it's the only map where getting void spawn kills is really feasible. You just get a KB stick and prop four diamond armor, which is incredibly easy on this map. And boom, cyber bullying time. Unfortunately, people tend to disconnect after a while if you repeatedly knock them in the void. I did feel kind of bad afterward. Nah, who am I kidding? I, I didn't. But after three days of trying, I finally got 250 void kills. So I went and gave the souls to the Oasis Spirit, who gave me Oasis Water to give to the blacksmith, to get some stupid ass hammer, to give to John Bloody Indigos, bringing me up to 826 stars. Then. I ascended, and after a long search for Dong Espresso and a painful conversation with Lord Business and a couple of angry chess players, I mean who wouldn't be angry playing chess, I finally opened the fourth room where I found a housing player, ooh, but he wanted me to win some games. Then behind door five I found, oh dear god, a Skyblock player, <laughs> but he wanted some Ender Dust which I already had so that was a free 10,000 XP. Behind door 6, I found the second most painful experience of my life after the third room. The quest itself was simple enough, I just had to win a quiz which was impossible to lose, but I had to do it while listening to this. In the seventh room, I met Ratman, who, fun trivia fact, is based on your favourite superhero, Captain America. He needed a load of stuff I already had to fix his bad joke detector to find the punner, based on Emperor Palpatine, obviously. In the 8th room I found... Oh, a Galaxy Wars player? Poor guy. But his quest was simple enough though, he wanted some iron nuggets, which I had a few hundred of. And despite my mockery of his choice of game, this fella was to become the key to getting tickets, because he'd give me 50 tickets for only 5 iron nuggets. Only issue was I had to spam through the same four lines of dialogue every time, accompanied by annoying villager sounds and dings. Again, eh, not great design. By now, I was up to 834 stars, but still working on a few of the earlier quests. So then door 9 I couldn't unlock because I needed stuff from later rooms. Okay. So in the 10th room, I found Spaceman. 
who wanted me to get 10 nether stars by winning games. The 11th door landed me in limbo where I found some limbo dust and nothing else. As I write the script, I cannot remember what this was used for, so it must have been incredibly irrelevant. After that, I'd run out of tickets again, so I went and played some more games, and in doing so, hit the most insane crossmap fireball of my life while lagging out of my mind. Ashfire has also unironically become one of my favourite maps after playing this much solo bedwars, because it's one of, like, seven remaining slow iron maps, and everyone knows slow iron is better than fast iron. After those games, I could open door 12! Behind it was Jetspin Turbo, who loves racing so much he changed his name to the most stupid fu- Like everyone else in this hotel, he wanted loads of random stuff as well as nether stars, so I need 15 wins to complete his and- Finger Hammer reappeared and wanted me to get a kill with some shiny sword, which I completed in the coolest way possible. I then found a guy trying to break into the hotel's vault right next to the guard. Okay. And after a few more games, I'd won 10 whole games for Lord Business and his it's lackeys. Business. But one of the lackeys became self-aware when I handed in the quest, which was a really weird moment. After a few other quests, I was up to 846 stars, almost halfway, but I'd already completed all 12 doors. Except door 9, of course, obviously. <laughs> so I found the most efficient way to gamble away my life savings in high pixel bed walls. In doing this, I found <laughs> Who wanted to capture a weather that wasn't even there? Naturally, he wanted nether stars along with and turbo, as well as bed sheets, which wouldn't have been such an issue had I not literally just given all my bed sheets to the laundry man. And the weather did eventually appear and continued to harass me every time I entered the hotel. After that, a pit player, ooh, stinky, led me to Bill Star, who wanted a Blitz Star. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? It was bad. I found it in my first game but couldn't pick it up, apparently I had to die first which seemed like a weird requirement but whatever. The next game I did manage to pick it up but realised afterwards that I needed to bring it back to my shopkeeper and like comfy pillows, specifically my shopkeeper. Several more games passed and I actually got up to I think a 19 win streak which is probably my highest ever win streak in solo, but eventually I got the goddamn blitz star. Around the same time I got everything I needed for housing guys and turbo which got me to 859 stars and I'd completed all 12 rooms. Oh, except the ninth room of course. But I wasn't done yet. I did a bit more gambling, hit 5 million tokens and found Inspector Meyer Sterling who wanted me to find clues on specific maps and specific modes of bed wars which sounds painful but wasn't actually too bad. I found the third clue first, as you do, in a solo game, but the rest of the clues were either found in teams modes or could be found on solo maps, but none of those maps were in rotation, great design, so I put off the rest of this quest and gambled on the maps I needed returning in the next rotation. Lots of things in this seem to rely on gambling, don't they? So in the meantime, I got B hopped on and found a couple more repeatable quests, yeah, 20 pillows, not repeatable, and ascended again. After that, I found even more repeatable quests, including an electrician who wanted gold. For Wyatt's. Might explain a few things regarding iPixel. I also found a goddamn villager, like what? what is he doing there? <sighs> but this all brought me up to 876 stars, so I can't really complain. After that, I got back to the Inspector quest. I got the fifth clue next, naturally, by playing a game of fours, which obviously breaks the idea of this video only being solo bad wars, but you know, what can I do? Next, for the third clue, I got the first clue in a game of threes on Rays, figuring it would be easier than fours, and boy was I right. I mean, just look at this lobby. But I again postponed the rest of that quest, as none of the maps for the second clue were in rotation. Or so I thought. We'll get back to that in a moment. Either way, I finished Wally's quest, after which he did nothing and the weather kept flying around, but he gave me the final item I needed to open door nine. In room 9, John Indigos took me on a thrilling quest, which I'm going to be honest was a bit crap. I gave him a load of items I didn't know I had to overcome problems I wasn't aware existed, but I was missing the final item, a blade the inspector would give me. So I got back to the inspector's quest, realising upon a careful rereading that the second clue could be found in mystery, which was in rotation. So I went and found the clue, but was not so lucky with the rest of the game.
The fourth and final clue, out of five of course, could be found in any dreams mode, but I really wanted to play Castle, which despite being 40v40 is probably the closest to solo, if you get what I mean. So I played a game of Castle, even breaking the enemy team's third bed, which, as well as being really cool, gave me kill credit for anyone who fell in the void, giving me loads of extra finals, and it gave me enough streak points to get a wither, which you fly around on shooting fireballs. It was a really great game. Until we suddenly lost our two remaining beds and my wither ran out over the void. Anyway, that gave me everything I needed for the inspector, so I put my detective prowess that I've gained from watching Death in Paradise to good use, and figured it was the racial mind the only one who actually denied killing the fella. So I took the knife from the inspector and murdered Indiana Jones with it, then did the most thrilling escape sequence. Honestly, I wouldn't mind how unexciting this quest was if Bleeding Indigoed here actually gave me some XP for it, because you get nothing. Not even some tickets. So I was stuck at 881 stars for now. Either way, that was the final quest in the Slumber Hotel, so after that I went and spoke to the receptionist, who upgraded my wallet, and I hurried to the owner's door, only to find that I needed 40,000 40, tickets?! That was going to take a few games. So I traded away everything I could, optimising my games to get items for all the repeatable quests, I played some more Castle on stream to get a heck load of iron as well to give the arcade player, and also just because it's really fun. Okay, I, I played 27 games of Castle, but uh, Castle fun plus ratio. But eventually, I got the 40,000 tickets I needed, and at the end of that stream, I finally opened the final, final stretch door of the Slumber Hotel. Behind it, I found... The Sandman. It was really anticlimactic, but he did give me 20,000 XP, plus a permanent 5% boost to XP from games, so like, that, that, that's pretty good. So I went and gambled a bit to bring myself up to 890 stars, which, if you're any good at maths, you'll notice isn't 900. So I did my weekly quests, including the challenge one for which I did collector challenge, which is definitely the easiest. I also did a bit more gambling and got an absolute whopping 1,600 XP from one roll. From this point, I could have just played more solo games, but that would have taken me like, I don't know, like 80 more games. So instead, I tactically waited for weeklies to reset, went and played about 30 hours of EU4 in the meantime, and then completed enough weeklies to bring me up to 898 stars. The last two stars I got in the only way I knew how after my experience in the Slumber Hotel. Through gambling which I did on stream about a month ago now, it's taken me too long to make this video. But after tens of thousands of tickets worth of rolls, I finally hit it. 900 stars. Isn't it? Oh, that's it, let's go! I was literally 11 XP away, let's go. And so that just about brings us up to today, where I am getting f***ing skybridged on, bro, you? come down! I think he wants a screeny, he recognised me in the pre-game, there we go, there's there's his screeny. And now, you die! Um, hi, you wanna die? You don't really wanna die, but you're going to die! So there are definitely ways to optimise how fast I did this, because, like, I, I basically did this strat every game, going mid, getting M's, and, and like, kind of playing passive, which, you know, takes longer than just going around the map murdering everyone, which, you know, that, that would have got me, like, the, the void kills and everything quicker, but then again, I might have got fewer wins, and so then I wouldn't have had the nether stars or anything, and so, you know. But despite how much I blasted the Slumber Hotel in this video, I actually quite enjoyed it, I have to say. It was... It was an interesting experience. I feel like stuff definitely needs rebalancing, like, you know, the 250 void kills versus every single other quest. Um, there are definitely some quality of life improvements that could be made as well, such as not having to spam through every single line of dialogue every time you want to, like, trade with the arcade player or whatever. Get off the map, bro! Okay, he came back. That is not what you do in that situation. If someone is in this, you do not come back for them. Oh wait, pink's disconnected. Okay, I, I guess I'll finish up this game quickly then. I feel like I've got a lot better at solo bed wars since I started doing this this challenge thing. It's not really a challenge, I don't know. But like, I've I've averaged a 4 win loss and 15-ish final kill death ratio, which is crazy. So I'm... well, this is the final bed, and uh, voila. 
you know how I mentioned I was on a 19 win streak? Well, I'm on that again, so uh, that's kind of crazy. I'm, I might I might do something with that. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. It, this has taken me a hell of a long time to make. I, I started recording, I think, on the 8th of February, and it's I, I don't know what day it is now because I don't know when I'm uploading this. But um, yeah, so if you did enjoy, leave a like. If you loved it even more than that, make sure to subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye. My goodness, I've finished recording it! Finally! <laughs> now I've just got to do the montage.